Sure. So there are different types of clinical trials, uh, some in earlier phases where uh, we're trying to see is this a treatment safe. Uh, and as you get to more advanced trials, uh, it's comparing it to the standard of care, such as for this disease, it's chemotherapy, typically with a platinum-based chemotherapy and pemetrexid, uh, to see if this experimental treatment is potentially better than the chemotherapy standard. Trials basically are designed to answer a question that we just don't know right now. So if, if we don't have a standard that we think is ideal enough, for instance, for this disease, the median survival we heard is unfortunately very dismal uh, as far as a year goes down. There are very new experimental therapies where survival is dramatically improving over the last decade. Uh, so there's a lot of reason to be excited about some of the clinical trials that are offering patients more and more options for longer and longer survival. So these trials are really designed to try to see what treatment options are available, make sure they're safe for patients, and then see how much better they can be at potentially improving outcomes. Since we don't know if they actually do improve outcomes, uh, the trials are designed to answer those questions. Dr. Ali, can you explain what the different phases of clinical trials are? Sure. So the, there's, there's, well, there's four phases. The, the first phase, or phase one trials, the main question that's being asked is safety. Is a treatment safe to do? Is it, is it, is it something that is uh, not harming, sure it's not harmful to a patient? And for drug trials that are phase one trials, often it's a dose finding uh, uh, study to see what is the optimal dose or what's the maximum tolerated dose. So that's the, what phase one trials are looking at, uh, are dosing and safety. Uh, phase two trials are then looking at uh, the first signs of efficacy. Is something effective? Is a treatment uh, doing what we hope it would do? Is it effective treatment for a, for a patient? Um, the, th the next phase of, of trials is phase three trials, which are larger studies, and those are comparative studies, which are looking at a standard treatment compared to an experimental treatment, with, whether it's uh, taking a standard treatment plus a new drug, plus a new procedure. Um, so those are comparative trials to, to find out if one is better than the other. Um, there's actually a phase four trial, which are, are post-marketing trials thing. After a drug or a treatment's been approved, then there are further trials that can go on to better define how uh, that, that treatment or drug can be used uh, appropriately. One thing to be aware of is that all these trials are rooted in science. So there's some strong biological or other rationale for doing the trials, either in uh, tissues that we're seeing in the laboratory that we see certain experimental drugs, uh, such as immunotherapies or new types of chemotherapies or other targeted agents appear to be very effective against mesothelioma. So those are what drive the rationale for then trying in humans uh, once we know that they're safe in, in animals, for instance, to then do the trials in humans. So there's, as you said, there's different ways to approach this. And uh, there's a, a couple of trials that uh, we've have, uh, had, had and, and are ongoing. Um, one trial that uh, is sort of in a hiatus but is starting back up again very shortly um, is a trial looking at a vaccine uh, to enhance an immune response against the cancer. This is a, it's a really unique uh, vaccine that uses a bacteria uh, called Listeria, uh, and it's uh, been modified to express a protein called mesothelin. Now, mesothelin is a human protein that's expressed on the surface of uh, uh, normal mesothelial cells, but also in the, on the cancer cells. So the idea is that if you can attach this mesothelin to a bacteria and generate an immune response, a vaccine against that, then the body's immune system will be primed to attack the cancer. So this is something that we've uh, been involved with already, and it's an ongoing trial. It's uh, very exciting, and, and some of this data will be presented uh, at an upcoming meeting um, to, uh, to sh show the, the responses that we've seen. Um, so that's a, that, that vaccine therapy is used in conjunction with, uh, with standard chemotherapy. Uh, so that's one example of, a, of an immunotherapy trial that we have. Another trial that was completed, um, and obviously you were in, something that Dr. Sturman was in, uh, involved with uh, uh, integrally as well, uh, was using a, a virus to uh, stimulate an immune response in the, in the lining of the lung. Do you, maybe I'll have you uh, discuss that study because I think it was really uh, uh, one of your uh, 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 you know, trials that you developed. So this is the idea that we could uh, deliver genetic material into the chest cavity to alter the cancer cells themselves, really to, al to turn them into factories to produce high levels of a protein that would stimulate the immune system against the cancer, literally turning the cancer against itself.
And so we had done a series of clinical trials in the early part of the last decade, so from 2003, say, through 2010, looking at putting this gene through a small tube into the chest cavity, delivering this gene to the cancer cells. And we were seeing, not in everyone, but in some patients, responses, even in patients who had been refractory to all other forms of therapy. Back in the laboratory at the same time, we had shown that chemotherapy given to cancer cells could synergize, could work together with this type of immunotherapy so that it worked better than either treatment alone. And so we developed a clinical trial that actually utilized the strengths of the entire team, radiation therapy, surgery, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy to combine them all together. So we used Dr. Friedberg's skills in terms of getting access into the chest cavity, even in patients whose chest cavities were fused from prior surgery or from talc being put into the chest cavity. We had patients get immunotherapy through a small tube that Dr. Friedberg would place in my team, myself, would insert the gene through the chest cavity, into the chest cavity through the tube, and then they would get the standard chemotherapy from Dr. Alley. Often, if they needed to, they would often get interspersed with radiation therapy, and we believe that radiation therapy may also synergize with this type of gene therapy and make it work better in the long term. So we completed the, really the world's largest gene therapy trial for mesothelioma and the first that intentionally combined chemotherapy and immunotherapy together and saw some very promising results, especially in the group of patients that tended to do worse with standard chemotherapy, which is patients who've already failed frontline chemotherapy and then were getting the next best chemotherapy afterwards. And we saw a significant improvement in survival in that group of patients. The treatment is also extremely well tolerated. So we're hoping to do a randomized study of this as well, looking in patients who are not surgical candidates uh, to look and see if chemotherapy versus chemotherapy plus immunotherapy would work better.